Nobody asked for it, but on this episode, I show you my actual EDC when I'm out and about. Whether it's in my pockets or stored in this, my all-time favorite man purse. So let's check it out. Let's start with a quick overview of the fit. I like to keep it simple, going for function over form. Starting with a must, a comfortable hoodie. This one being one of my all-time favorite from Flint and Tinder, their 10-year pullover. And as the name suggests, it's meant to last. Then the pants of choice when it gets colder here in Canada, the Dewar Fireside Denim. Because it stretches nicely, is built tough, but most importantly, is also lined with fleece. So it's like jeans, but soft and cuddly. Moving to the opposite end up top, even in colder weather, I prefer a cap over anything else. Thankfully, Nike has this hybrid from ACG, their Tailwind Sherpa cap, made of a ripstop nylon, so it's light but windproof, and this one's got fleece ear flaps that honestly just feel like you've got two sheep stapled to your head. I'm a big time head sweater, so when I get inside, it's nice to be able to just flip it away instead of taking it completely off, which for anyone who wears caps knows is basically a big no-no. Now the new 2020 EDC staple is a mask, and I've tested so, so many, and the one that comes out on top for me is from Tom Bin, their V4 cloth mask starting with an easily adjustable stretchy and soft lanyard so my ears don't bleed after wearing it all day but it also doubles to hold the whole mask around my neck when taken off then a quick snip and snap and it's right back on they've also got a sturdy moldable nose bridge which i find is a must to keep a good seal and finally just plenty of coverage under the chin and right up to the ears on both sides it's purposely designed oversized to allow your mouth to actually move when talking without your mask sliding around with it they use a cotton fleece which all i can say is yes it's just so soft. And while not medical grade, I feel confident these two layers of thick fabric has been covered. Onto the gear now, starting with a must have, my keys. I used to use a key organizer and still like to swap around sometimes, but lately I've been testing Orbit Key's new Clip version 2. Basically a very modern looking carabiner with a magnetic fidlock mount and a D-ring attached to that, because I generally don't carry more than two keys and a door fob now. So I decided to go for convenience over having to occupy my pockets with some bulky metallic organizer. And honestly, unclipping my keys now is just super satisfying to do but everything is secured in the d-ring no matter how hard you shake and bake it then when you're done it's even more satisfying when you click it right back in place on a more serious note it's just fun to be able to play with your keys again although everyone else around you may disagree plus with the fancy new metallic clip it just looks sleek wherever you decide to hang it next up my front right pants pocket is exclusively reserved for my phone lately going with the iphone 12 pro obviously, and protected with a Rhino Shield solid suitcase, which offers a variety of designs to choose from, like these awesome ones from Pime Studio. However, it's not only for these chunky boys, they've even got cases available for the little ones too. I dig the matte touch finish and simple icon design, because anything is better than that damn glossy white finish. Now the solid suitcases themselves though, have been a channel favorite for as long as I remember. Combine that with the small details like a slightly textured edge for better finger grippiness, a relatively slim case given it can handle over 10 foot drop and overall just comfortable to hold one-handed thanks to the matte finish around back. But that backside is what we're talking about today because with Black Friday coming up, this is your chance to pick up your favorite colors, designs, and collabs like from PewDiePie, which I will add, they're also including limited edition stickers to go with every one of his cases, something anyone part of the floor gang can appreciate. He's got a few designs to choose from and you can even customize the base color of the case too. Now, if you prefer their Mod NX bumper series, which I listed as one of the best iPhone 12 cases in my latest latest roundup linked up above if you want to check that out but given it's almost not a case at all it still offers their shock spread tech lined around the inside with the best part being its ability to still transform into a full-fledged case and if you pick up several backplate designs you can have a different case for every day of the week and just in case all that wasn't enough the buttons can be swapped around too you're able to almost customize every single part of the case while still getting that trusted drop protection that rhino shield is known for in case you do drop your iphone as much as i do though don't worry because the ink they used to print these designs is apparently just as tough. Finally, to complete the package for 360 degrees of coverage, the 3D Impact Stream Protector, as it's a no-brainer given it'll be on sale, plus my discount code will work on top of that. Unlike glass screen protectors though, the flexibility of 3D Impact means it can take a beating so your iPhone doesn't have to, and investing a few dollars now is going to be way cheaper than a few hundred down the road to inevitably repair your broken screen. So even if you somehow don't know who PewDiePie is and have no idea why anyone would join Join a floor gang. Rhino Shield offers plenty of others to choose from, like the NASA series I recently used for my astronaut EDC episode, linked above if you're wondering what they carry on a daily basis. I am curious though, comment down below which YouTuber you'd rep hard for, and if it isn't me, don't worry, I definitely will maybe not probably ban you. Just kidding. 
kind of. Onto the opposite pocket, the left side is exclusively where my wallet goes, which lately it's been the Apple leather wallet with MagSafe. And no, it doesn't work with the Rhino Shoot cases right now, but I don't care. Because to me, Apple has made a sleek, functional, and minimal wallet first that just so happens can also attach to your iPhone. And honestly, although super simple, it's not even expensive for what it is. You're getting a luxury branded Apple wallet, something other fancy schmancy brands can charge hundreds of dollars for, and you'd get even less than this. Luxury. Am I right? Speaking of expensive though, nowadays I always carry some sort of fidget toy on me and lately it's been one from Hog Doggins, their titanium Divic slider, as it's one of those purchases that will definitely land you in the doghouse for at least a month. At the core of it, it's a really, really simple design. Two curved pieces of titanium with magnets embedded between them, which allow you to do this, slide them back and forth over and over again. Like I said, for almost $350, you'd have to either be crazy, rich, or Asian. Just kidding. You don't need to be rich if you run an EDC YouTube channel. I get it. It's hard to justify, but it's one of those things you just need to feel for yourself to understand. And then when you realize you need one in your life, maybe wear a blindfold while you complete the checkout process. All right, on to my man purse though, more formally known as a sakush according to Wikipedia. Clipped onto the outside though is again, very overkill, especially for your wallet. A collab between two brands I may pronounce wrong, Nilmant and Kovo, the healthy project sanitizer case. Utilizing a Cordura nylon shell to keep your gold mine safe, it includes a refillable 60 milliliter squeeze bottle. The bulk of the cost probably comes from the fact that it's got a magnetic fidlock hook that allows you to unclip and share on the fly. So if it wasn't obvious and you have to ask, I'm really just a sucker for all things magnetic. Beside that though, a new and exciting one to my collection, the a dam design shield safe touch tool. You've probably seen a million and one of these already this year, but this one caught my attention because of this. Once you push the shiny button, wha-bam, you will feel a little like Captain Hook. The whole tool is made of some tough aluminum and brass, so you won't have any issues grabbing and tugging at even the thickest of door handles. Plus, it can also double as a button pusher and stylus too, pretty much allowing you to go hands-free when you're out and about. But the key benefit is, when done, it folds and hides into itself. Sure, you can say it's a little overkill, but for my personal sanity, better safe than sorry. And it's also just another fun thing to fidget with too. I combine it with a simple retractable lanyard from Keyback. So whenever I'm faced with a nemesis, I mean public door handle, it's a quick one, two, wha-bam, and I'm gone before you know it. Sure, everything attached to the bag is a little jingle jangly, but I basically have all my sanitation tools instantly accessible without having to unzip or reach into any pockets. On that note though, my bag of choice is the Code of Bell Annex Liner, simply because of its pocketing layout. It doesn't have a stiff structure to it, allowing its main compartment to expand and deflate on demand, but also one of the very, very few bags I've tested that can accommodate this, my 11 inch iPad Pro with the magic keyboard attached. Within the back pocket, there's enough space to slide my notebook in as well, an item I always carry to complement my iPad workflow. And I've also recently jumped on the Muji pen fad as well. If you don't know Muji, they're a Japanese retailer that pretty much strips down products to their basic core, which also pretty much describes their pens. They're smooth, comfortable and housed in this plastic shell that you don't need to worry about tossing around. The pocket also has some sleeves on the front, great for gear you want to keep separate, like this, the Black Fox Panchenko Bean Gen 2 Knife. A small but serious workhorse of a blade, I generally don't require any major cutting when I'm out and about, so having something as small and cute as this is really just for me to fiddle around with that won't scare anyone around me when I pop this open. But this little guy utilizes a slip joint mechanism, which I prefer in tools as you simply just push it back in place to secure it shut, which means it's one less thing I have to break my nails on. I'm a supporter for always having a sharp blade on you, but the Penchenko bean knife just proves that size doesn't always matter, which in reality sums up most of what I'm packing because my multi-tool of choice is even tinier. The Swiss Army Signature Light in their new blacked out onyx finish. To me, EDC tools have to provide more value than they take away, generally by taking up more pocket real estate, but that's why I love the Signature Light. It offers all the essential tools you'd find yourself actually using packed in something smaller than my index finger. I can't even count how many times a pair of scissors, even as tiny as this, have come in handy. It doesn't even end there though. It's got a tiny LED LED built in, activated by pressing the logo, and a tiny pen as well. Not something I actually use often, but given it barely bulks up the whole tool, 
why not? I own the original tool in red, but now that it comes in a blackout, it's a no brainer for team black on black on black. These next two are a little odd to carry for me, mainly because I don't smoke. But to me, at the risk of sounding like a pyromaniac, lighters are just fun to turn on and off. This very affordable all metal blacked out clipper just makes it extra cool looking while doing so. But as for the Subota Bulba lighter, I don't actually fill it with fluid because as capable of a lighter it is, I just carry it because it looks and feels freaking awesome. It's one of those things you have on you that looks so cool that it just gets your creative juices flowing. It may not always be a lighter though, sometimes another knife or a coin, basically whatever just looks rad because sometimes holding something new is what sparks that next billion dollar idea. Next up, because I try to make everything I carry useful, these are zipper pulls from Alpaca their nano phone stand kit. They're these tiny tools that are hidden inside a zipper pull. The first one being a simple SIM card ejector, which you'd be surprised how often you need something this tiny to poke at things. But the other one included in the kit is definitely way more useful. A super tiny phone stand that surprisingly works really well, even with a case on. And when you're done, fold it up and alakazam. Literally hidden away, taking up zero extra space. But now you always have a phone stand with you. Finally, moving to the main pocket where I store a majority of my miscellaneous goodies and honestly why I chose this bag to begin with as it can literally be as large or as flat as you want it to be. One item I store in here I wanted to point out is this really really small water bottle from Memo Bottle. This is the A7 size obviously decked out with the matte black aluminum cap but I know what you're thinking why? But to me, it's not meant to be a full-fledged water bottle. The flat rectangular design and tiny shape means I can store this in any pocket without it weighing me down. But most importantly, when I'm running a quick chore outside, it's a backup reservoir that allows me to always have water on me because stay hydrated, kids. The pocket can store so much more though, I literally just throw things in here just in case. Mints, gum, snacks, backup cards, wet wipes, napkins, high chews, Come on, even a backup mask and a plastic protector to keep it separated. And of course, daily essentials. There's plenty of room to spare though. Capable of fitting an extra shirt, scarf, maybe a six inch sub, but then being able to completely flatten down after you watched a life-changing minimalism video by Matt Diavella. Last but not least though, I've got a hero clip attached on one of the exterior loops. My all-time favorite EDC piece, this all metal carabiner with a built in articulating hook. For those times you need to just drop a number two in public, this allows you to hang your bag or jacket up anywhere so it's not rubbing up on those grimy public washroom floors. Also, public washroom doors without built in hooks should be illegal. Let me know in the comments what your must have EDC is that you would head back home if you forgot it. Anyways, that's it. I rest my case.